Are we live? We're live. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, trustees, clerk, department heads, uh, residents. Um, today, I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees via Zoom, uh, live stream uh, via YouTube. Today is Monday, August 2nd, and the time is 6.35 p.m. Um, can you call the roll, Clark? Yes. Trustee Holmes? Present. 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 Trustee Norwood? Present. Trustee Steve? Present. Trustee Belcher? Here. Trustee House? Present. And Trustee Brown? <laughs> Present. Thank you. All right, we have a call. Um, yes. Next, um, if everyone will stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America. Of America. To the republic, for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty, justice and for justice. all. Thank you. And if we would, uh, Trustee House can lead us in prayer. Hey, everybody, bow your heads, please. Uh, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day. I ask that you oversee this meeting, that we have a uh, Humble and peaceful meeting for the residents of this community, for the board, and for all involved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, next we have general announcements. Um, this is now the time that any board member, any trustee can speak and um, give your report if you have any um, general announcements. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Yes, I, I, want to, I would like to say something. Sure. Go ahead, Trustee uh, Steves. I was wanted to say, you know, for the record, I, I would prefer or I would like to be even consulted on moving the department reports. Our committee reports have switched to department reports. So the committees that the trustees are over now the department heads are giving a report. So or, or if we wanna make an announcement, we can make it here, but I would prefer if that's gonna be the move, some of us may want us to let the department heads make the report for us. But if we're committee chairs we're over departments, I feel the board should give our committee reports. I just want to say that for the record, I just don't agree with the way this is going as far as the committee reports are reported by the department heads versus the versus the trustees. Okay, is that the end of your statement? Yes. Okay. So the reason why I made that move is because of change, of course. And a lot of times people ask for change and then when it's implemented, people don't like the change. Um, currently, I feel that the department heads is the one that do the day-to-day -day operation. It's their report that we're reading. So I felt that it was needed for a community to hear from them. To become one with the community, they know their face and they can elaborate more than any of us on what they do um, as it relates to day-to-day -day operation. All we do, or I ain't gonna say we, cause I'm not a trustee no longer, but uh, read their reports into record. Um, and they can do it themselves. Now, if any trustee have anything that they're doing or have done, you can always speak and add to or anything of that nature. But right now, I'm just trying to show the community who the department heads are and let them speak for their department. So that, that was the reason for that. Do any other trustee have any um, announcements as Mayor, it relates to? This sure, go ahead. Trustee Brown. Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to give my condolences to the family uh, of Alexis Wilson. Thank you. All right, no problem. Anyone else? Uh, this is Trustee Belcher. I just like to say I thank everyone who called and checked on me. Um, the last committee of the whole meeting that we had, I left early. I do apologize, but I had been in a car accident. So the residents and uh, you and board had checked on me. So I just want to say thank you all for checking on me while I was down. No problem, anytime. We all human besides uh, titles, we all our people. So we should always show, show love accordingly. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be recognized there. Sure, go ahead. You know, first and foremost, just like to um, send a prayer out to that young lady's family, you know, that they have strength within their family and her friends. I mean, we all, no, uh, she was human, first of all, she's a young lady, but we still must stand together and pray for that family. Pray for a mother, pray for a father, brothers, sisters, friends, and family. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you, trustee. Um, any other trustee you'd like to say anything or speak? Sure, ma'am. May I be a trust? Sure, go ahead. Um, I would also just like to, um, again, um, with, in regards to Trustee Brown and Holmes, I'd like to send prayers to the family. And um, I'd like to thank everyone again for checking on me. I am hanging in there, everyone. So COVID hasn't taken me down um, and I'll be around soon. So thanks again, residents. Uh, thanks, Pastor Fletcher. Thanks to the Board of Trustees and the Mayor for all the remedies and um, calls. And I just appreciate it, everyone. Yes, no problem. And I'm glad you're on uh, full recovery. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, next on the agenda, we have the village administrator's report. Clerk Brown, Dorothy Brown. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Board of Trustees. Uh, I'm uh, really happy to uh, report to you today. Uh, things have been going very well. I continue to uh, work to ensure that we're providing the services necessary uh, for the uh, residents of Dalton in the most effective and efficient manner. <clears throat> I, as I indicated on last at the last time, the last time I reported, uh, I am in the process of of re assessing each department. Uh, I started with the water department. Uh, I am still working uh, to get the water department done. Uh, so many things um, have come into play. Uh, so the water department is still on my agenda and I'll move, my plan is to move to housing and then um, to the uh, business licenses, um, et cetera. Uh, I, um, we submitted the information to the assessor's office to request a list of all uh, property owners uh, in the village of Dalton so that we can do our assessment. Uh, to determine that uh, people are not taking exemptions or are they, are, are they actually taking exemptions they're supposed to be taking, et cetera. We have not received that report back from the, from the uh, assessor's office yet. Uh, we successfully uh, created a security assessment document that was required in order for us to uh, uh, present uh, another application to the Secretary of State to obtain an updated database. Uh, the last time, uh, according to the information given to us by the Secretary of State, uh, four vehicle stickers was uh, 2013 when that was submitted. I wanna thank our information technology person, uh, Mr. Derek Blocker for working with me on that as well as our intern, Yiling um, Yao. Uh, I have worked with the um, village engineer and he'll be uh, reporting, but we have been able to successfully submit the street resurfacing uh, to uh, for the infrastructure, and uh, that uh, was submitted on last month. Uh, the we met with the civic systems uh, to get an understanding of where they are in the implementation. They have submitted to us their project plan, and I will be meeting with Janice. Johnson, the Director of Administrative Services and the Information Technology uh, person, Mr. Blocker, to add our project plan process to their project plan and establish a timeline for implementing the new civic system. Uh, we had, I had, I gave our staff an opportunity, all of the staff an opportunity to see a webinar uh, put on by civic system so that we can all get an understanding of what is, that is going to be uh, like. I also brought in ProChamps to give us a, another assessment of how they operate so that we can fully take advantage of uh, the ProChamps. And um, tonight uh, our housing director will be presenting uh, information concerning um, long-term rentals, which um, we feel it will be something that will help the village of Dalton significantly as a result of that meeting. I continue my biweekly meetings with the management staff and those have been very productive, giving everyone an opportunity to actually see what is going on uh, with each department on a, um, on a office wide basis. I met with the uh, MCOA, the municipal uh, collection agency and determined that uh, there are a lot of things that we could be doing 
from a collection standpoint, and we are in the process of, um, of putting uh, those things in place so that we're doing a better job of uh, getting information to them for collections. I met with the head of the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunities, Mr. David Parr, to find out exactly what we have to do in order to get the capital uh, the capital bill commitments that are, are have been made for Dalton within the um, uh, last capital bill and how to submit that so that we in fact can take advantage of that. And uh, I have that information now. And so um, I, I'm going to be working uh, Mayor with you and, and, and our state representative or state senator to put that information forward so that we are not just constantly pushing our capital bill into the next year and the next year, but where, whereby we set priorities and actually get some of our capital, uh, get some of the things that are committed to us actually put into uh, the uh, bill by the, um, uh, by, by the uh, state and actually fund it through the grant, through the, uh, but through the bond. Um, tomorrow, I will be meeting with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency along with our village administrate, village uh, engineer to talk about where we stand from a standpoint of how to get digital water meters. Uh, and then finally, I attempted to submit a $1 million grant that was out, put out by the Small Business Administration to help small businesses recover from COVID. And we were not uh, successful in submitting that because our information has not been updated with sams.gov. And then to, I've been working with Ms. Janet Johnson and we've been working since last Thursday. And today we attempted again and we found out today that uh, Don's information still had, had the mayor uh, the old mayor and the old address. So the lady, as we were talking to her, said that if all the information does not match, the information that my attempt to update the village administrator would have been rejected. So we still have more to do. We're not registered. Um, our Don, Janet submitted our updated information to the Don's um, website today. And uh, then we'll attempt to update the sams.gov so that that will put us in positions to actually apply for grants. I have also um, uh, subscribed to the grants, uh, all of the, uh, to get alerts on grants and I receive emails every day. I'll be send on, sending those to our intern for now to review to see if there are things that relates to Dalton or relates to a local municipal government so that we can start to look at applying for uh, those. Um, that is my report, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, next we have the engineer's report. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Madam Clerk, trustees and all departments. You are me, you are me. Right. Am I still on mute? No? No, I can hear. Yeah, oh, I can hear. Okay. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple items in my report. Um, just like the village administrator said, we um, finished up the street resurfacing uh, program. We've submitted that to IDOT for approval. We're also working in tandem with the public works director on a sidewalk program, an alley program, and also um, looking to replace the water meters in the village uh, to have a remote reading system. And also as part of my report, I sent um, some information with regards to the American Rescue Plan Act, the ARPA, and that act, um, it's funding that is available to the village and there's a process to get that funding and draw that funding down. And I will be working with the administration on drawing that funding down. And also what are the rules and regulations with regards to what's eligible for spending that funding. The funding will be available this year and next year. It'll be two payments that go out to the village. 
Um, and that's all I have for my report this evening. And I will entertain any questions that the board may have. Do I have any questions for One us? question, Ron, yes. are we, you know if we're doing anything with the fire hydrants or no? Will we be doing something later on or, you know, the with the fire village hydrants? Is, as part of the DCO funding, there were uh -huh. doctors that were, um, that were in place to replace some of the fire hydrants. So we are working with DCO on some of that funding, how to draw that funding down, because um, it was at least $100,000 that, that was designated for fire hydrant removal okay. and replacement. And you can chime in on that, uh, Administrator Brown. Right, thanks, Ron. So we have to establish our priorities. I'll be sitting down, sitting down with the mayor. Um, that there was a, there is a hundred thousand um, dollars that has been that's a part of the current year's um, commitment, uh, and um, uh, based upon our priorities, uh, so far from what I could see, the previous administration actually had included for the following year's commitment a half a million dollars uh, to. Uh, get the state legislature to um, approve for um, for fire hydrants. Uh, that would actually be something that would go to the legislature this year, this current, this I'm sorry, this upcoming session. And uh, hopefully, if they approve that, that would be for fiscal uh, 23 spending. Uh, this hundred thousand is the only amount that would be for fiscal one, fiscal 22, but. Um, uh, from what I understand from the gentleman that I spoke to, we have to first get our uh, state legislator to, to get the caucus to agree that that is one of their priorities. And then they would then pre present it to the Office of Budget and Management. And then the Office of Budget and Management would then have to put it in a bond uh, for, to, they would have to put it as a part of the fiscal 22 bond that they would put on the street. So it's not just automatic, just because they approved it doesn't mean that we get it. Uh, but it is a part of the bill, Illinois, uh, that uh, Governor Prisker uh, put out as a six year plan. So and they've only had two years has passed. So you have four more years uh, to get your uh, priorities um, approved. I asked him um, whether or not we get everything, even if we don't get it this year, is everything that we asked for, will we eventually get it? He could not answer that question, but uh, he said it is their hope that in the long run, uh, everyone's request will be able to get put into some bond and, uh, and actually get funded, but it's not automatic. They're not funded right now. They have to be actually, you know, added. And uh, we have, and the, the, your state legislature has to request that it gets funded for you. And if I can add on to that, Administrator Brown, as part of the American Rescue Plan Act, water and sewer projects um, are eligible to utilize that funding. So with regards to some of the issues that we're having with sewer and also with the fire hydrants, those would be eligible for that funding as well. So just to let you know. Thank you. You're talking, okay, you're talking about the ARPA funding? That we're going to be getting. yes the a the ARPA funding yes all right thank you so much um, anybody else okay so next on the agenda we have department reports so we're going to skip well we can start with police we'll start with police chief caught up at the moment. up at the moment so I'm going to let uh, Trusty Holmes uh, speak to his report Trusty Holmes. Good evening, good evening. Over the weekend, the traffic unit patrolled up and down 142nd Street due to the complaints of a lot of speeders, cars speeding up and down from off the expressway and down 147th Street. And the uh, children and teenagers are having a hard time crossing the street, getting over to the park, and also the senior who wants to go sit in the park. So they did a wonderful job up and down 142nd Street and they will continue. Second, I'm asking that you all still bring your families out. Uh, National Night Out is tomorrow, start at six o'clock on the Fitness Center. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, end of report. Okay, thank you. Um, next is Pete 
Chief McCain, you on here? Okay. Go ahead with your report. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. Good evening, Mayor, Village Clerk, Trustees, Department mm -hmm. Heads, and Residents of Dalton. I would like to uh, first recognize uh, Mayor Henyard and with all the elected officials and the administrative personnel for the warm wishes and kind regards with the sudden loss of our Dalton firefighter, Robert Morgan. Um, it's been quite a whirlwind over the past three weeks from him in passing on July 6th to a group of us, which include the mayor and, and trustee Belcher and trustee Holmes and, and a few other folks. And then we uh, had his homecoming, um, wake Friday night in his funeral on Saturday. So it was great seeing everyone out and it showed a real, uh, it was a true show of community. And I appreciate that. Um, the support from the village and appreciate of that. So please continue to keep the Morgan family as well as my firefighters in your prayers because they need it. I'd also like to thank uh, Mayor Henier with all the elected officials and administrative staff, staff for helping us secure the, the budget items uh, toward one, uh, fixing the fire stations. That was a huge help with the roofs. We're almost ready with station two to open back up shortly after a few other items. Um, purchasing the much needed fire suppression vehicles. At one point we were down to one and a half vehicles. So uh, we're getting in the process of getting our fleet back in order. And of course the necessary hirings of new firefighters because we're at the lowest that we've been in years. So thank you guys. Uh, we've had so many vacancies and guys working tremendous amount of hours. So uh, the approval of these items will, will greatly improve our services to meet the emergency demands of the community. And that's what we're here to do is serve the public. Uh, below, which was attached, the attachment which was sent to you guys is our year-to-date statistics for emergency runs, uh, January 1st through July 31st. Uh, so far, the Dalton Fire Department has responded to 3,154 incidents, 152 of which were fires, three were uh, overpressure ruptures and explosions, 2,032 emergency medical runs, 239 auto accidents, 126 hazardous material runs, carbon monoxide, gas leaks, things of that nature, uh, 82 service calls, smoke investigations, odor investigations, 112 false alarms, 219 fire alarm and carbon monoxide uh, responses, and we have about another 189 that still need to be coded. So uh, we're up 29 runs to where we were last year at this time, and we're just shy of 15 calls a day of the average. Any questions? If there's no questions, uh, Mayor, that will conclude my report. All right. Thank you, Chief. Um, next, we Thank have you. public. You're welcome. Public Works, uh, Stacey Corral. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Board. Can everyone hear me? Public Works has installed and checked and repaired 13 street lights. Mead has installed four new lights on Sibley. Public Works has cut down 16 large trees and trimmed five smaller trees. Public Works has repaired several water shutoff valves and one water main break. Public Works pothole truck has been out throughout the village along with the sweeper. Public Works has installed six street signs, eight stop signs, and installed several new poles for new signs to come. Public Works has checked, cleaned, and repaired five sewers. Public Works has performed two emergency water turnoffs. Public Works has also cut and weed whacked 18 vacant properties and seven lots. Public Works has performed zero jobs to the fire department vehicles, two jobs to the housing department, six jobs to the police department, and nine jobs to the Public Works department, along with miscellaneous jobs that have come into the shop. Please put your garbage out the night before your garbage day pickup, along with any debris that you may have. Mayor, that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, um, Stacey. Um, next, we have uh, the Water Department, William Moore. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, apologize, I have some issues with my uh, background, so I just have my picture posted there. So for that, I do apologize. But Mayor, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, give me an opportunity to share uh, my report today, Monday, August the 2nd, to the village trustees, the clerk, village administrator, department heads, and to the residents. Uh, here is my report. Uh, Mayor, on your recommendation, the War Department, as of Monday, June the 28th, has extended hours every Monday from 9 to 7 p.m. And this is uh, to accommodate our residents that are working um, and get off late 
as well as for those who may not have had the time during a busy schedule to come into the payment center to make their payments. And also, Mayor, even with the uh, tenant um, meeting, the landlord meeting, uh, filling out their cars, we've just seen them actually being more transparent and that we're getting more legible uh, cars, yellow cars to that meeting. So thank you for that opportunity. And, and the residents responding, and, um, and uh, that gives opportunity to, again, give you a more accurate reading. So we appreciate that uh, as well, Mayor. And also on your uh, recommendations, we offered the extended vehicle stickers a deadline from uh, July 9th, uh, 2021. Uh, the deadline was actually June 30th, but that uh, extension um, was actually great. We had actually a couple of compliments for you, Mayor, from residents extending that vehicle sticker deadline. Now, Ms. Miller, she stated that, and I quote, the extension allows me to keep more money during the pandemic, and I appreciate the Mayor for considering the residents. Tell her thanks, end quote. And also a, a village resident also, he, he, he refused to provide me with this or decline, I should say, to give me his name. Um, he stated that this is a pleasant surprise that the mayor is offering this extension. Every little bit helps, it's much appreciated, end quote. So overall mayor, uh, the residents seem extremely happy with the deadline extension, as well as um, how we collectively across all departments, I would say, um, you know, was able to provide the this quality service. And, and I, I think um, certainly the village administrator, uh, uh, Dorothy Brown and all the department heads, their staff and the many volunteers that tirelessly assisted us with this monumental endeavor. Um, again, I wanna say thank you for your cooperation and collaborative efforts. Um, they, uh, I just heard from residents, they were saying, you know, it wasn't extensive long lines, wait time. So again, I appreciate everyone collaborating that, that, that allowed for this endeavor to, uh, to be very successful. And um, as, as of today, the vehicle sticker and animal pet tags, as of August the 2nd, um, we've sold vehicle stickers 7,325, totaling $234,475. The animal and pet tags, we've sold 191. I believe that's a little short, but I'll get to that later on in my report, totaling 2,865. Um, me, being short, meaning uh, we don't really have a, 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 a way to determine if all of the, uh, the animals in the village has been um, registered. So uh, we, I've reached out to Jared Wesley. Um, he was uh, referred to us by Stan Urban. If you know about uh, ProChamps, he, he, um, he indicated that pet parent, which is similar to uh, uh, ProChamps, it will allow for us to at least get some type of number as to how many um, animals there and we can actually register those. I did send, um, I responded to Mr. Jared Wesley's email um, that he sent over and try to set up a Zoom meeting, get some type of introduction so we can ask some questions, see if this particular program can assist us with trying to determine how many um, um, you know, animals are in the village of Dalton. I, I, I make a joke, I said I drive through that. I've seen more than 191 dogs just driving into Dalton, but that's another story. Um, so, and again, I wanna uh, also share, we have two new hires. We have a supervisor and we have a clerk. Um, I'd like to welcome on our team, Frank Perez, our supervisor, who many of you at the Village Hall um, have met. Uh, Frank Perez, he served in government and uh, he's a military veteran. He brings a wealth of knowledge uh, in administration and a willingness to serve the residents and brings diversity to our team. He's also fluent in Spanish. Mayor, um, I know that um, you wanted to bridge that gap and provide a better service to our Hispanic residents. Frank certainly is the candidate that um, will assist us in getting the job done. We're extremely excited to have him on board. And just to give you a little a tidbit, I won't digress here, but we had a resident that came in that was, um, was Hispanic and, uh, and really we had a, an issue understanding what she was saying. Frank was there, he was able to really speak with her, get uh, clarity and was able to actually assist her. So I, I appreciate you with your vision to wanna to bridge that gap. And, and Frank is again, uh, there to, to do that. And uh, also um, her Frank was is gonna also help with our welcome package if we need to help um, translate that to Spanish. Um, he's willing to do that. So again, Mayor, thank you for your vision as, as relates to um, you know, bridging that gap with our Hispanic community. And uh, we also have uh, Pat Burr, who's a clerk, who had a prior tenure in government and she brings a wealth of knowledge and willingness to serve the residents. She serves in capacity of a customer service account research, customer callbacks and follow up amongst um, other daily tasks. One of the issues I cited when I actually uh, came on board is that um, a lot of residents wasn't get callbacks. They were, you know, I, we, I had a resident that said, I put a call in in 2019 and nobody called me back. So they're really appreciative that we have someone that's there doing the research, finding out what the issues are, calling them back, you know, and, and letting them know either, you know, this or that, just bringing resolve to it. So 
Um, I really appreciate uh, Pat and her expertise. And I'm truly fortunate and blessed to have her on our team. And uh, last but, but not least, um, in August, we have upcoming customer service training. Um, this was something that uh, you know I, I put off because we were right in the middle of vehicle sticker and we didn't have the manpower to really uh, put for customer service. But I understand that's a priority. That is a priority for, for our staff. And actually the train is, is for our entire staff. And this will allow us to better serve our residents in a more professional, pleasant, efficient, and progressive manner. And I plan on having ongoing customer service training for an entire team. We're here to provide high quality financial and customer services to the residents, businesses of the village of Dalton, the village staff in an efficient and progressive manner while safeguarding the village assets and upholding the public trust. And so customer service is, is high. We want you to come in and have that five-star experience. Um, understand there's a process, but we're on, a, you know, the train has left the station. So with that uh, being said, Mayor, uh, this concludes my report. If there's any questions, thank you. Um, first, I want to say thank you for um, the report and I thank you for coming on board and helping me uh, get that department in order. That's one of the departments that get the most complaints because everybody's upset about the water bill and you guys have been awesome over there as it relates to explaining to them estimate and also actual billing. So thank you again. And I'm, I'm so thankful for um, Frank as well because he is bilingual and he actually translates for me too. So I love that because <laughs> now I can talk to the Hispanic community. So that's been going really well. Yes. So um, we're working on yeah, making absolutely. Uh, the stuff we sent out in English and also Spanish now. So he's working on that. So thank you guys again. I appreciate it. Um, next welcome, we have housing, pleasure, Sharon. Thank you. Sharon Harris, housing. Okay, good evening, Mayor. I'm just trying to redo my video here. Good evening, Mayor and trustees. Good evening. Good evening. Providing a report for the housing department for the month of July, we collected uh, payments for 30 as is sales, um, one deed in lieu. Then we've also collected 10 payments for escrow deposits. We've received um, 100 payments for 101 housing tickets. We've also collected uh, monies, property transfer tax, 48 transfer tax. We've also collected payments for seven quick claim deeds, nine rental licenses, 16 rental inspections. We've also collected funds for 19 sale inspections, three tax deeds, uh, 55 transfer stamps that were sold for the month of July collected payments for trust deeds, as well as our vacant property registration payment, which gives a total, uh, excuse me, gives us a total of $89,548 collected for our housing department transactions. And that concludes my report. You have any questions? Okay, thank you so much. Next we have code enforcement, uh, Brian Thickman. Um, good evening, Mayor, Clerk, and Board of Trustees and residents of Dalton. Um, I'll start my report um, for the month of July up to this past Friday. We have, we have written 67 branch and bush tickets. We have 126 um, disposal waste and junk vehicle tickets. We have written 316 grass and weed tickets, 40 property maintenance tickets, um, 71 um, vacant permit citations and a total of 37 animal citations. And that completes my report for the evening. Any questions? All right, thank you, All right, thank you Brian. Oh, you uh, last but not least, we have uh, Shamisha Williams for building permits. Is she on here? Yep, I'm on yep. here. Hello, okay. everyone. Hello. Hi. Okay, for the building department, uh, we issued 93 uh, general permits, 27 plumbing permits, uh, 13 electrical permits, eight homeowners permits. Uh, we registered 23 contractors. Uh, we received five business license payments. Um, 11 water meters were installed. Uh, we did five water turn off payments. Uh, motor, motor, I'm sorry, motor fuel tax payments was 
we did six of those and five liquor tax payments for the month of July. And that's it. All right, thank you so much. All right. Um, community, I hope that you guys are watching this and you see all the department heads. These are the people that you go to the village to see on a daily basis. So now I'm trying to make it be uh, more flexible and that you become one with them and you know their faces. So thank you guys for all tuning in. Um, next, we have corporate bills, uh, trustee house. Thank you, Mayor. We, we have for our corporate bills, we'll be reading into record. We did an electronic vote last month for us. So I'll read those bills into record. And I think we, I guess we have to do the formal vote and then I'll read the bills for the uh, for this coming month. Okay, uh, one second, Trustee. You're reading the old bills. We already approved those. So uh, why would you be reading those into record right now? Uh, the bills for last month have not been done publicly. Yeah. So we was, never do. We've always did them as the consent agenda, but we never read them or did it at a board meeting. We always just voted for it and then that'd be it. So what so, would be your logic? I spoke with clerk uh, key as well as the attorney and then those have not been read tr for transparency in front of the residents as well. That would be the logic. Okay. But what I'm saying is this. So you want to just read them as to record or are you trying to go over them? What are you trying to do? Well, I believe we have to vote on them as well. For we the don't official. have to vote on them because we already voted on them through consent agenda, which was last month's bills. Now we're in a whole month later. So why would we be voting on something you guys already approved? Well, I would ask the attorney to chime in. That was not my understanding when I spoke with the clerk and attorney earlier. Okay, that's fine. Is she, I don't see her. Attorney? I'm here. Are you here. I just okay. turned it on. So okay. um, I, I spoke with the clerk earlier and the question is um, with respect to these bills and the question that I was posed was uh, if they should be read at tonight's board meeting in addition to this month's bills and I just my response was well why not if you're just adding them on and then I spoke to uh, the mayor and then I also spoke to uh, the village administrator and I had not been able to touch base with Ms. Johnson before we were evacuated from the village hall. But um, I found out at that point that it was an established practice the way that you did it by email. So I did have some additional questions about that for the poll, uh, the way that you processed the poll. So that was the communication um, that we had today. But at this point, if you're just reading it on and adding it and not discussing. I don't. Okay. I don't see an issue. All right. They've already so been approved is my understanding. They've already been approved. They've already been paid. So we on to this one list currently that we have before us. So if you just want to read that into record, go right ahead. Okay. So the warrant, the first warrant list we had was corporate payment register number 191. This was the electronic register with corporate payments of 66,548.92. Uh, the water fund having payments for register 191 of $233.24 with total corporate payments on register 191, $346,982.16. And this and is for-, for corporate payment let this for the last month that is that is for last month yes okay just get a, give a date for, for the Separate. record that would be for the month of that would be july's uh payment payment register that's the electronic payment registers for july all right thank you and then the warrant list register which is corporate payments register 192 payments of 600 of Payments of $661,784.71. Manual checks $565 even. Gross payroll June, June 4th, 2021, $389,422.01. Uh, gross payroll for June 18th, $359,412.43. Uh, manual checks issued $58,774.64. 
Melanie Fitness Center register $192, $6,741.71. Gross payroll for Melanie's on June 4th, $927.11. Gross payroll June 18th, Melanie Fitness Center, $927.11. Total payments, uh, total corporate payments for register 192 is $1,478,554.72. Those were the bills for previous months that were approved electronically. All right. Okay. Next up, we have the electronic payments list for this month, which is payment register 193, corporate payments of $17,585.55, water fund register 193, payments 279,936 even, 2009 bond payment $132,500, 2009 Series B payment is $159,667.50. 2009 C bond payments of $115,400. Homewood disposal bonds for register 193 is 14,000. Total payments on register 193 is $719,089.05. And last but not least, uh, the corporate payments on our warrant list, which is payment register 194, <clears throat> corporate payments of $1,465,704.36, manual checks issued $120,798.82, gross payroll July 2nd, $354,820.73, gross payroll July 16th, $367,416.47, Gross payroll July 30th, $404,028.51. Manual checks, $889.30. Melanie Fitness Center register payments on 194 is $5,195.14. Gross payroll for Melanie Fitness on July 2nd, $927.11. Gross payroll July 16th, $945.11. Gross payroll July 30th, $945.11. So total payments for register 194 is $3,127,533.58. I would ask for a motion to pay the bills. All right, is there a motion to pay the bills? Is this, um, is this all together or is this for a warrant list for August 2nd, 2021? Correct. That's for the current warrant list. That's for register 193 and 194, the current warrant list. Okay, so then I have a question. Before we can do discussion. Okay, okay. I was just making sure it was 193 and 94. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the current corporate bills amending and removing item, item line number 01-14549 Marvelous Media removing 0112592 Mad Bombers Fireworks, removing 0112592 Barricades, removing 0112592 Fireworks Signs. Okay, is there, is there a second? Second. Okay, who was that? That second. Who was it? Steve. Steve. Okay. Okay. So, so hold on one second. You guys want to not pay people after they've done the work? Is it a reason for why you're removing the items, uh, Trustee Belcher? You can go yes. through each one and tell us why you're removing them. Okay, so this is um, our issue, which has come across the board several times now. Uh, when you first asked for fireworks, you asked for $5,000 for the fireworks show. We spent $3,000 in, in June for that was paid to Mad Bombers. I requested a copy of donations before anybody says we got donations. We got a $2,000 donation from the Thornton Township and then a $1,000, which I don't know if that was actually for the fireworks from Five Point Star Concrete. But you went over the $5,000 and spent an additional $3,000. 
total bills right now for special events that you spent is $30,000 in three months. The spending for these events has become ridiculous. So I feel as a resident that this um, show, which was a nice show, but of course it did not come in, in consent with all the additional spending that you made a decision to spend. So I'm asking to remove those items until we can do something about your spending. Okay, so let's talk about what you just stated. As it relates to anything on this agenda, I always encourage each trustee, y'all know my phone number, you can call and ask questions about anything you have a problem with on this agenda. You guys do not. The people, meaning the residents, is tired of this show here, and they ask us to talk about all this behind closed doors before we get here. But here we are. If y'all would ask me what the issues are or what's the problem as it relates to um, Mayor Bomber, I would have told you. I did not overspend anything. That's exactly what the board asked of me. Now, we are the people on the contract as it relates to Mayor Bomber. We have to pay them the money and get our money back from the other party that stated they was paying the other $5,000. Other than that, I'm not over budget. I spent exactly what you guys approved for me. But on here now today that you see for the money, that's the money that's owed to them. And then we have to get our difference back from the other vendor that stated they was paying us for the put on the show. That's number one. Number two, you said something about uh, media. I don't understand why you won't pay the media and Ed Steves uh, no more than anybody how much something like this would cost. I've talked to him several times about paying, uh, what is his real name? I call him Chu, but paying on uh, RV or Marville um, for his services. The guy comes out, he does a service, he sit here, he films everybody, he includes everybody, and I don't understand why we would not pay him. It's been over a month since he has gotten paid. And he did this service. So here it is on month two. And you saying we still don't want to pay him what is owed to him. And then I, the only two I got, was it the third one that you stated? It, it was four to be exact. What's um, the other? The ones that the, I didn't, the, you know. The barricade that you use for blocking off the street and the fireworks sign. The barricades? Yes, it was barricade, came 0112592 under special events. The bear case cost $4,711. $4,000, okay. For the bear case, for blocking off the street. Okay. Well, I wouldn't know how much that really ran. I didn't order it. But okay. And what else? And then the firework signs. So the firework signs, you, why would I not order firework signs? Even though I don't order the stuff, the staff orders the stuff. So I can even tell you that the price of what you're saying it costs. That, but it that was for makes, an event. That, Mayor, that makes it even more uncertain that you don't know the prices of the stuff that you're spending. I did, I did not know. Which I makes told me them. more uncomfortable with the, the spending. So that's what I, and I spoke to a couple of my colleagues, fellow trustees, and that was my concern of the things that I had issues with. So that's why okay. I made the and, that, and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to pull something, amend something, or if you have a problem with it. No, I did not know how much the doggone firework science cost it. But if you saying that you want to pull them out, it's so big. You have to pay the vendors regardless. So if you want to, y'all want to hold them up and don't pay them for a month, go ahead. So anybody else, any other trustee that uh, coexists with what trustee Belcher is stating on pulling the items? Is everybody on one accord with want to pull the items? I, I have a question. Um, sure. The ahead. location, if someone can explain the location of Finders International for 350000 what is that? The who? Location Finders International, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Can someone okay. explain what is that for? What is that service for? Okay. Well, Chris can explain the warrant list to you guys. Location Finders International. That is your Sibley Woodlawn TIF two. That is the final um, installment payment that you guys have on the contract that was issued into with the vendor twenty years back. Okay. Okay, Chris. Thank you. Hey, hey. Mayor, if I can be recognized. Yeah, go ahead, trustee. Yes. Yeah, we mentioned the, the other five thousand uh, dollars. If there's, if that's going to be donated, who's donating it, and can we do they have an idea when that's going to be coming in to offset some of the cost? Yeah, that's what I was waiting on. That was supposed to get donated from uh, school board one forty eight. So that's what I was waiting on. If you guys don't want to pay, don't pay. But it was coming in from donations, which I told the board members at the last meeting when we originally did this. Thank you. Any other questions?
May I, may I be addressed? No problem. May, may, I, may I be addressed? Sure, go ahead. I'm sure I just got a Talk question. Go ahead. Um, I just have a question about the warrant list for Chris real quick, if I can. Sure, go ahead, Chris. Yep. Hey, Chris, um, on page five, what is the um, Mead Electric Company Incorporated? That's for the poles, the poles that go up, the light poles. Okay, for so all the lights. lights. But, but Chris, go ahead. You, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. You normally know ask. <laughs> Yeah, those are just the cost of the light poles that the village installs for the various streets when they go down or they have to replace or do maintenance on the various light poles of the village. Okay. Okay, great. And then on uh, page six, uh, Chris, what is uh, the screws? What is the $4,064 for screws? You know what screws those are? Those were, it was more than one screw. That was for, um, those are like um, utility, not utility, but um for the water mains, those types of things, it was for a water related types of screws that they install for the water mains or whenever they're doing maintenance for the water. Okay, okay. Um, page seven, I just have the uh, dash z- 01, dash 21, dash 552, uh, the $1,626.43. You know what those two are? That relates to AT&T Mobility, the page above it. Due to the way the system, the report printed out of the system, it cut off the vendor name. So it, on the previous page, it has the vendor AT&T Mobility. So, and then the date range is just when the payments were for. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Yes, I would like to make a statement. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanna say I agree with uh, Trustee Belcher. You know, we have an ordinance that there's a $1,500 limit before it has to get board approval. So I'm just, I, I know the board are concerned about the spending $30,000 in three months is a lot. So we want to, we want to kind of, kind of get a hold on this and just follow the ordinance that's been passed. Okay. So for the record, I have not spent over my budget. I have not spent no $30,000. So everybody can say whatever they like up here. And when you keep saying that I overspent something as relates to contracts, I have not. I don't sit here and say, okay, spend this, spend that. If you guys have told me that we could spend the money for the fireworks, we did exactly that. Now, as it relates to ordering something that staff might have ordered or whatever you're stating now, stuff do come in and we have to pay bills. So you guys can ask questions before we get here. That way we can get it resolved and get the right answers. Um, I did not know about the fireworks signs, but I'm, of course they're going to order, order fireworks fireworks signs to put out to community because you have to advertise. So I didn't understand why anybody have a problem with it. And then as it relates to a budget, as long as I'm within my budget, I can spend it on items that I feel necessary for the community. So if I feel I want to do an outreach today, I feel I want to do a food give back. If I feel I want to do whatever type of outreach I can, as long as I'm within my budget. So when everybody keeps saying this and saying that, I'm not here to go back and forth. I'm here to make sure things happen for community. They've been in the house for two years. And I would think, if anything, that the board of trustees would be with me on having events outdoors for the community. So that's why I'm at with it. Let's call oh, Laurel. Excuse me. Uh, no, trustee. excuse me. Excuse me, Mayor. Just so I can be correct, because we're about transparency. I asked Janice Johnson to pull all the 592, which is special events, because in the budget, you allotted for $30,000. I received a report today, so I came with receipts, and this does not even include the media. You have spent $30,881.80. So I don't want anybody to say okay, that so- somebody is giving fake numbers unless that means one of the employees is giving it, because I ask this because you always see contact the people so we can get the information, and that's what I did before I came here so I can make sure that I had accurate information. Okay, and that's, that's fine. I don't mind any of you talking to any of the department heads. So let's get that clear. But what I will say to you is I know what I spent. And I know I did not spend no $30,000. You, so you, you keep saying I spent $30,000, so be it. So if you sell it, I said for that one item, I did said not. You didn't know how it was, so you don't know how much. Trust me. If I say, if I just said I don't know how much they spent on a banner for outside, I didn't. I don't got to lie about that. I didn't know what they spent the $100. They spent $200. It's a banner. It's for advertising, for outdoors. So what I'm saying to you is that if you ever have a problem with something, instead of grandstanding, you can call my phone and say, I'm not Mayor, I, need I to went talk. to the I appropriate person. Hold on, trustee, trustee, trustee. Can I finish? Thank you. 
So if you have a problem with anything, you can come and talk to me, just like anybody else up here. So we don't have to do this for the public. The public said they were tired of this. You ran with me on my ticket. And what did they tell us? Don't do this. And what are you doing? They, want, they doing want it honestly. So what I'm they saying to you honesty. is, let's so move forward now. Whatever, trustee, you are out of order. You do not have no, the floor. Trustee, you don't have the floor. Thank you. Yes, you are. Learn your right of order. You out of order. So now that I have the floor, I would like to move forward. You guys made up your mind on the items you want to take out. You will have to pay the vendors. They did do the work. So let's move forward on the vote. Uh, Clerk Key, if you will, call the roll. Thank you. Sure. That's Trustee Holmes. Trustee no, Holmes. you're being rude. You out of order. All right. Go ahead. Trustee Dorwood. Aye. Trustee Steve. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. Okay. Motion passed. Thank you so much. Moving on to old business. So just so you guys know, um, number four under approval, we're going to remove the class eight because they did not have anything ready for the board approval. And I want you guys to have everything that you asked for. So I am pulling that until they get the paperwork to give to the board of trustees. And then I'm also pulling block by block program. And I will be talking to each trustee this week to go over and make sure we got all of that uh, organized um, as that it is crossed. So moving forward with approval of consent items. Um, Number one, resolution number 21-0110, highway authority agreement between the village of Dalton and Tanzia Inc. Number two, resolution number 21-011, street resurfacing, um, rebuilding Illinois bond grant. Number three, resolution number 21-012, honorary street naming for Elder Edward Creighton. Now I'm skipping four, that's what I'm removing. Number five, Tree trimming and removal contract for 142 in Park. Number six, putting stop signs on Michigan eastbound State and Clark Street. Number seven, A, um, Bud's Ambulance Extension, including collection of Dalton Fire Department fees. And number B, Fire Services uh, Inc. Number eight, ordinance number 21 005, amendment of the Village of Dalton Plants and Weed Code to increase penalties for grass cutting regulation. By, um, by commercial and railroad properties. Number nine, ordinance number 21-006, amendment to the village of Dalton nuisance code to define as nuisance and to prohibit bouncy houses in certain areas and increase penalties on barbecue grills and bouncy houses in front yards. Uh, number 10, we're skipping. Um, number 11, uh, comment use of Melody Fitness Center parking lot for staging area for vehicles and equipment during severe weather storms. Can I have a motion to pass um, approval of consent items A? I motion. I motion. Is there a second? I second. second. All right, there's a motion and a second to approve as stated. Can you please call the roll? Trustee Holmes. Aye. 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 Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Steve. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Brown. Aye. The motion passed. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to new business, discussion and possible action required for approval of the Village of Dawson GL renewal with InsureSource um, Cliff Taylor. Are you there? Yes, I am, Mayor. How are you this All evening? Right. Hey, I'm okay. How you doing? Great. Thank you. Uh, good evening again, Mayor, uh, Honorable Trustees, Administrator Brown, uh, the other department heads on the, um, on the call here, uh, the distinguished guests and the valued residents of Dalton. Um, we come around this time again every year around August where we get ready for the renewal for the General Liability Insurance Program. Um, over the last couple months, we've been um, you know, gathering information since I've been brought back in to just to make sure that uh, we are properly insuring the village, uh, making sure that everything is adding up in terms of vehicles, um, payroll, uh, property, just make sure everything's in line here. And uh, over the last 18 months or so, we've been going through what they call a hard market in the insurance industry, especially as it relates to municipal insurance. 
And so we've been seeing increases across the board. Um, you know, we've been seeing carriers that have been pulling out of Cook County, um, reducing their limits. What may have taken maybe two or three carriers to ensure the village and other villages, now it takes four or five. Um, so it's a very hard market now, and we still seem to be trending in that area, and that has reflected this year in this renewal. Um, some of the things um, in the renewal, and hopefully all you guys got a copy of it, uh, which I did forward over, uh, we talk about in our executive summary. And so we just discussed a lot of the things that were going on where we, uh, there was an underreporting of city vehicles um, once we went through our, our, our audit, if you will. Um, we also had a been, little bit of increase in payroll. Um, we had some, um, when we had it, we had a building, for example, that we had a value of about approximately $5 million. Um, now that value on that building is 18 million. So of course, a big jump like that in just a year and a half since I represented the village, of course, causes an increase on the property. So now that that number is there, now we have to defend that <laughs> by bringing an appraisal out to come out and do a proper appraisal of the building to see what the actual value is so we can have that proof to the carrier. And if it's in fact not 18 million, which I don't believe it is, then we'll be dual credit at that time. But that's something that will happen after the renewal. Um, so um, in saying all of that and everything is going on and with the pricing pressures, of course, we did see an increase this year. Um, so I don't know if everyone had a chance to look at the renewal to kind of see where we're at. Um, last year, it looks like the SIR, which is called your self-insured retention, look at it as your deductible. Um, that went up two and a half times. Uh, we had a $100,000 SIR uh, when I had it. Now it's at $250,000, three hundred dollars for law enforcement. Um, not sure if it was a large renewal last year nor, and, and, and the SIR was increased in order to keep premium down. I'm not sure if that's what happened um, last year, but that's the trend and not just with the village of Dalton, like I said, it's happening all across the nation. Um, so um, if we kept where we're at apples to apples with the current SIRs that you have now, you're gonna see an increase of right around 40%. If we made some adjustments, meaning if we increase the SIR, um, going from 250 to five, um, we can see, we can drop the renewal down to as low as 20%. Um, I'm not a big fan of increasing the SIR, um, but in this situation, which is such a, a, a pretty big renewal uh, increase, I think it's something that we do consider, but we all also like to look forward to, because once you start that downward spiral, which started last year of increasing the SIR to reduce premium, the downward spiral starts and it's hard to, it's hard to go back. Um, to get back to 100,000 would be almost impossible at this time. You almost, you, the insurance companies have you exactly what they want you to be frank. Um, so um, this is where we at on the renewal. Uh, we will, I will continue to uh, move forward. We're doing our safety meetings. I've already talked with uh, Ms. Uh, Janice Johnson in terms of setting up meetings in the next week. Um, to start our safety meetings again. Um, of course, working with the customer service as well. And we continue to uh, be there in the village, just making sure that we're doing everything proper and from a safety standpoint to make sure that our employees are as safe as possible. And um, if you have any questions for me, that kind of concludes my report. I know I kind of went through it rather quick. So I don't know if anyone had any chance to review. So if there's any questions, I am available. I have one question. This is Trustee Brown. No, I haven't had a chance to review it. You said an SIR increase. Do you have the amount of that increase? Yes. So what you're referring to if, if we increase the SIR? Uh-huh. Okay. So right now we're at a $250,000 SIR for most lines, except property, of course. Okay. And 300 for law enforcement. And that was implemented last year. Okay. Um, one of the options we put was to increase all lines from 250 to 500, law enforcement would go from, uh, I'm sorry, law enforcement would go to 350. And that will put us at right around a 20 to 25% renewal. Okay. And you said you forward us all that information for review, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I will do just that. Thank you so much, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, one of keep in mind too, our renewal was August 5th. So um, of course, time is of the essence as well. Yes, I would have to uh, read very fast tonight. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, Mayor, if I could be recognized. Yes, go ahead, Trustee Yes. 
Okay, I just want to uh, say I, I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Mr. Taylor as well. So I just want to say thank you for um, the hard work that you've done. I think it is a good quota proposal and the work he's done has been great in years past. So thank you for the information, albeit tough. It's always been very direct, so I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And I know this year is a, is a, is a tough renewal. Um, in the past, I've been able to do some, I would say, magical things and keeping numbers pretty flat. And But it's, it's, it's a very tough market right now. Like I said, it's not just the village of Dalton, it's everywhere. And it's, uh, it's being experienced, it's being felt throughout. I've, I've had some municipal clients that saw their premiums double. So it's been very tough. Oh, um, board of trustees, I believe. Okay, board of trustees, I don't even know. Are you, you guys want to wait um, to next meeting for this? Are you okay with moving forward? What would you guys like to do now? Trustee Al? Um, I'm okay with moving forward, but I, I think I might have heard of Trustee Brown. I don't, I don't know if the other trustees have had an opportunity to look over everything, so I'll defer to the rest of the board. I would like uh, to wait if possible. This is Trustee Brown. Okay. okay. Trustee Steves. Um, I'm with uh, Trustee Brown. We can wait till next week. I want to go over through a few more things for myself. Okay. Thanks. May I may I be addressed, Mayor? Uh, sure. sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, the renewal is August fifth. So if there's any chance, if you want me there all day tomorrow, if there's a chance I can meet because we're running on the time crunch here with the renewal, so we'd have to come to a decision because we have to bind coverage by August fifth. Okay. In order okay. for the village to have coverage. Okay, if we okay, can meet so to what they can do. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, trustee. I don't know who that was. But if okay. we could, we can do a consent agenda if the board okay with that, since the deadline is the fifth of August. Today is the second, so that's within three days. If you guys can get together or contact Cliff and figure out what you want to do. All right, yes, sir. Go ahead. What trustee was that? This is trustee Brown. If he can meet with me tomorrow, that'll be fine. Okay. It's up so, to him. Uh, Cliff. Yeah, you give me the time, I'll be there. Okay. okay. Hey, hey guys. Anybody else? Hey, yeah, Mayor. In regards to yeah. that, um, Cliff, I know you're meeting with her tomorrow. I'm um, doing quarantine, but maybe if I could tune in, if I can call you all so I can just um, be there over the phone when you all have your discussion so you don't have to repeat it twice for me. Absolutely. Yeah. If that'll work I for you, Cliff. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Trustee Holmes. Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Trustee House. Uh, I think we should move forward um, and do respect that the other board members want to uh, review the items, but um, I'm gonna stand with Trustee House. I believe we should move forward. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Okay, so Cliff, if you could get with um, the board members tomorrow and then we'll do a consent agenda because there's only two that wants to move forward now and everybody else wants to speak with you. Mary. So you guys can get, hold on one minute. You guys can get together um, and you can send an email out to everybody and they can meet you at Village Hall. Uh, go ahead, Trustee Belcher. You didn't call my name and I'm with moving forward. Okay. Okay, so we with moving forward. That's three votes. I'm with moving forward. Um, if you want, um, there could be a motion to approve. Is there a motion to approve? Oh, uh, just for clarity, I'm, I am with moving forward. I, I would just want to suggest, and I think Cliff will be amenable to it. I would still like uh, Cliff to meet with those trustees who want to get oh, more clarity. Absolutely. But I am for moving forward. I, I would make the motion that we move forward with the um, um, insurance binder. I second. Okay, there have been a motion and a second. Uh, Clerk Key, can you call the roll? Sure. Trustee Holmes? Aye. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Steve? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. And Trustee Brown? Aye. Motion passed. Thank you all. all. Right, thank we'll, uh, email everyone tomorrow. I'll still be available tomorrow to meet and answer any questions that you all may have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Cliff. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have discussion and possible action required for approval to increase rates for services rendered in the housing department. So, is Sharon, are you on here? Ms. Harris? Yes, Mayor. I am still on okay. here. All right. So, let's go over the fees that you are proposing to the board to explain to them why, why it's needed, what's going on. 
So just get them all for you. Okay, so um, I submitted a synopsis to Administrator Brown in regards to um, seeking to implement an increase in the annual rental license registration and inspection fees, according to the current uh, ordinance that we have, which is ordinance number 09468. Basically, pertaining to fiscal impact, the Village of Dalton Housing Department currently has a rental registration fee of $50 and an inspection fee of $35 per unit. So in total, it's $85 for a single family home and then an increased value if there's a multi-unit property. Revenue generated for 2019 was in the amount of $56,460 for rental registration and $57,645 for rental fees. Revenue generated for 2020 was $45,250 for rental registration and $46,730 for rental inspection fees. The amount generated in 2020 was de decreased, excuse me, due to circumstances, of course, surrounding COVID-19 pandemic. The recommendations um, that we've come up with is that the Village, in Dalton, Village of Dalton Housing Department is seeking to increase registration and inspection fees due to one, the rental fees have not been increased since 2009. Then two, in comparison to other towns and municipalities, the village of Dalton is significantly lower. And then three, the increase in fees will also generate an increase in revenue. Therefore, the proposed recommendation is to increase the current rental registration by $50, which will make the rental registration $100 yearly. And then in addition, increase the inspection fee by $50 for single family homes and an additional $40 per unit for multi-unit properties. So instead of basically a single family home will be $85, currently $85, it would increase to 200. And then the value of the rental inspection is $35 will increase to 75 for multi-unit properties only. So we originally passed an ordinance, um, which is ordinance number 09468 regarding registration fees and inspection fees. And so now we're just looking to see if we can get the board's approval to increase the current fees that we have now. Again, we haven't increased the fees since 2009. All right. Um, any trustees have any questions as it relates to um, the fees she's suggesting? Any board member? Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the increased rates for the housing department? make a motion that we approve the increased housing rates um, that is proposed by Sharon Harris for housing. I second. I second it. Her second by Holmes. And her two people. Holmes. Second by Holmes. Okay. Yes. okay. okay. Call the roll. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Aye. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Steve. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. And Trustee Brown. Aye. Motion passes. May I also Thank be you. recognized for another part of that, sure. if I may? Okay, so our current licensing year is usually aligned with the um, budget year, meaning that it starts May 1st to April 30th. So I just wanted to maybe get a consensus if we're going to still keep the same licensing year or if we can move the licensing year to um, January 1st to December 31st. So it's not something of course that we have already just put down on paper as a suggestion, but it also gives us an opportunity in regards to how we would um, deal with late charges. Do we give them a two week late span or one month late span? So on and so forth. So if at all possible um, from this point forward that we just have a discussion to talk about if we can possibly change the licensing year and then come up with a plan in regards to um, charging uh, fees after the uh, late time. We just have to come up with the late time. So if that's okay. okay. Okay, so duly noted, um, that's not on the agenda currently. So the board can weigh in through email, or stop in to see you and go over whatever they see fit for it. Um, but my opinion would be to, uh, I agree with you, January to December, but you guys should wait till the next year to implement it 
so people ain't double charged. But yeah, but send something out so that the board can weigh in and we can put it on the next agenda as well to talk about it in depth. So thank you so Very much. much. Mm -hmm. um, no problem. Next on the agenda is discussion and possible action required for approval to create an ordinance to amend certain portions of Title III of the, of the Village Code in the Village of Dalton, Cook County, Illinois, governing business license. Okay, so let me see. Let's see. So I know some of you are aware of we've been having problems in town um, as relates to people's business licenses. Uh, I'm going to let the attorney uh, speak to it. She's been working hand in hand with me, uh, trying to get it under control. So that's why this is before you now. Um, attorney Shante. So we've been uh, working also with Director Thigpen regarding a couple businesses that we were notified or found out that they were operating without a proper license. So it prompted us to go look at the code. And I've found some discrepancies uh, with respect to the code, at least the code, the code and the version that we have currently, which does not allow for a certain category of licenses. So we're still investigating the amendments to the Title III that may be on the books, but as it stands right now, there are certain categories of licenses that we don't have confirmation whether they exist or not. And then we also have a separate situation where businesses are operating without a license at all. So we're looking at, as the Administrator Brown is looking at the licensing issues, this will be one of those issues. So this ordinance, there's one section that basically makes it clear that you have to have a business license. The way that the current code is written, uh, it's broken down into multiple sections, but not one section says flat out, every business operating has to have the proper license. So that is in addition, and then it also addresses uh, event spaces as well. Okay. Uh, Board of Trustees, y'all have any questions? Oh, let me get a motion first. Um, is there a motion to approve um, this ordinance to make the amendment? Yes. Let's see. For this one, I, I want to, well, at least I'll say for me, I don't know if we need a good discussion. I, I just wanted a little more, a little more time to speak with the attorney uh, to get better understanding okay but can i have a motion so we can discuss so that okay. she can i'll make the motion thank you is there a second i'll second it all right thank you now now discussion you got y'all got questions for the attorney oh no i would rather do a one-off so i'm not i'm not prepared to do a vote at this time i would rather speak with the attorney um between now and our next meeting okay do anybody else have any concerns or questions as it relates to this ordinance this is Trustee Brown. I would like to speak with the attorney as well. Okay. Anybody else? Um, okay. I'll okay. Later, I didn't. Who was that? Mayor, um, in, in regards to, on my behalf, I'll speak with the lady also so I can get clarity on it also. Okay. So if you guys can um, speak with her this week so we can get this in motion. So we can stop the people that do um, operate in our town and don't have a business license. Um, you guys need to make a decision on it ASAP. So if you guys can just send something through email, that'd be great. And then talk to us. So if you could, attorney, um, speak with everybody tomorrow. So about the weekend, we stopping people from operating without a business license. Okay. Fair okay. Enough. All right, thank you. Um, moving on, discussion and possible action. Required for approval of servant agreement and payment for the village of Dalton employee, trustee house. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. This is just the formal vote on a um, agreement, a, a separation or severance agreement that was discussed in June's board meeting during executive session. So we have to have a formal vote for the agreement and to issue the payment. So I'm asking that we, well, I motion that we approve the agreement uh, discussed in executive session. I'll second. All right. There's a motion in a second. Um, any discussion? Okay, so I guess you want to explain to the residents what, what we're doing or what you are proposing? Well, oh, my, trust we're, we're, no, well, my explanation was it's a severance agreement that we are that we already discussed. 
Right. We discussed in closed session, but now it's on the floor. You have to tell the people what it is we're doing. So what are we what are we like about to collaborate? Propose? Please feel free, but that was my explanation. Okay. So let me explain something to anybody over here. When you guys put stuff on the agenda, it's y'all agenda item. Y'all have to elaborate to the public, the residents, to tell them why y'all see fit, why we pushing this agenda. Uh, you, you guys can't be afraid to tell people what it is you're trying to do. Yes, I can elaborate. I can say what it is you're doing, but it'd be my opinion. So then we'll go back and forth. So I give you the floor to speak and say, this is why I did it. This is what I think is best for the village. But no one seems to want to tell the people why you guys are voting the way you're voting or suggesting what we do. So that's why I'm asking if you could tell the people, because of course I'm, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, but it's your agenda. Okay. Uh, well, I explained it's a, it's a severance arrangement. So the floor is yours, Mayor. Okay. So I guess trustee house don't want to explain to the people what it is that they're doing. Okay. So we had a meeting. What was it? Uh, June, I will say, first week of June in regards to creating um, a service package for an employee that uh, got terminated at the village of Dalton. Um, the employee only been in office, well, worked with the village for five years. So the board sees fit that the person should get um, a payout. My advice as mayor was to not do so, that I don't think we should create um, things of this cal caliber because once you do this, you're gonna open Pandora's box. Um, half of the time when people do get a payout like this, they've been there for 30 plus years. It's not created for people that's at will or people that think um, the village owes them anything. Everybody that works in politics or have a political position or however you guys wanna phrase it, um, it's at will. When you're at will, you can get fired for any given reason. So I just want people to know that uh, I am not in favor of creating this. Um, I think that this is going to open up Pandora's box when it comes to other employees that have been here, got fired, got terminated, and they feel that they can come and get um, pay a payout because they was terminated. So that is my um, synopsis for it. Anybody have anything to say? Any trustees? Sure. Um, may I may be recognized? Sure. Um, so in regards uh, to this matter, um, I don't know if we're like, I don't know if, if, it's, if it's not like the employee or exactly what we're doing. You went in but and out. I, I, okay. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. You went in and out. Go ahead. Okay. Um, in regards to the severance package for the employee, um, this is something that I agreed upon or um, I was in favor of because um, I felt like, I, I, and I know you stated it's politics, um, but I just felt like personally um, the, the worker was, was a good employee. She's been a good employee for us. And due to the, the circumstances, I felt as if um, I like to give her a serve severance um, since she no longer works with us. And I didn't feel personally um, as if just not giving her anything considering the fact that she is, she was a uh, buyer. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? No one else? Okay. So um, everyone said they saved me for the record and um, I will try to make sure that everyone um, stick to transparency as it relates to talking to the public and just state the facts of how you feel instead of just saying um, you guys feel that a person should just get a payout. So with that being said, um, Clerk Key, call the room. Trusty Holmes. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, Holmes. You had an echo. Can you repeat your vote? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Exchange. I got you. Thank you. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Steve? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. And Trustee Brown? Aye. Motion passes. All right, thank you. So um, mayor's veto message to the board of trustees and the residents of Dawson, uh, August 2nd, 2021 action. 
uh, as reflected in the record, the majority of the Board of Trustees voted to approve a service agreement for former village administrator Elizabeth Scott. This action is not in the best interest of the village. It creates a liability against the village and it requires the unnecessary spending of the village funds. First, the village administrator was an executive management employee who served at the pleasure of the mayor. In other words, she was an at-will employee. According to the law, an at-will employee can be terminated for any reason or no reason at all. Secondly, providing a service package to an at-will employee sends a negative message and sets the stage for an, any employee terminated in the future to demand to pay a service that they are not entitled to under the law. This will create a big burden and liability on the village's budget. Therefore, I officially veto this action and will submit my written objections at the next board meeting, Mayor Tiffany. So I'm just letting you guys know that it's coming. I want to read that into record. And that is for the record uh, per key. And I will email that to you. Um, next, we have Mayor's report. So let's go to the Mayor's report. Um, payment Center. The Payment Center is now open until 7 p.m. on Mondays, which was stated by uh, our department head in the beginning. Conwell Edison, Light Up Dalton. The Conwell Edison Light Up Dalton program has started. LED lights are being installed for all street lights. This should make your area much brighter. And I have gotten calls about some of the areas that is brighter. So I thank you, Conwell Edison, for uh, putting the LED lights in. Um, Soon we will be announcing information to you about a program where a Conwell Edison agency organization will be providing a free LED lights for your front and backyard uh, fixtures. At least 75% of the block will have a sign up for the program for the lights to be installed on the block. And at least two people from the block will need to volunteer to assist them with putting the lights in. Um, the link will be on our website Everyone will need an address. Uh, in blah, blah, blah. everyone will need an email address to sign up. So please help your seniors out and get your block lit up. Uh, please send in your email address. Um, you can go to vodon.org on the pop-up screen. My 90-day plan is on the village website. Please uh, log into www.vodon.org to view my plan. August 6th is the end of my first 90 day day, 90 days. Um, many of the items have already been accomplished or started. Uh, we held several meetings, landlord and tenant meetings. Um, I hosted a very productive, when I say very, very productive landlord meeting, Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. I wanna give a special thanks to all the landlords that came out. So thank you again, it was packed. Everyone was outside and it was great, great information. Um, next, I hosted a also productive meeting for the tenants. So I want to thank everybody that was on July 29th, 2021. Special thanks to the tenants that came out. Uh, everyone loved the information that was presented. So I just want everyone to um, keep talking to the department heads. And I'm glad that you guys was happy that they was there to address any issues um, that was before us. Business owners. Um, I'm hosting a meeting for the business owners via Zoom. I'm working on a date and time for that as now. And then I'm also working on one for a mandatory uh, homeowners meeting by popular demand. I guess you guys love the fact that I did the tenants and landlord and everyone called the mayor's office stating, well, where should you go do the homeowners? So I'm going to do one for you guys on Thursday, August 26th at 6 p.m., depending on weather. And this meeting will be in the park lot as well, or it may be um, via Zoom. So I will keep you notified. Um, a special thanks to those who signed up for the residents and youth advisory committees, along with the seniors advisory committee. Uh, we will be setting our first meeting soon. Um, they will probably be given via Zoom due to the fact of the Delta variant. Maintenance for the village of Dawson. Roof maintenance on all village properties uh, still is being done. Uh, the roofs are completed for Village Hall, the Payment Center, and Fire Station 2. Um, they have started the work on the Police Station and Fire Station 1. Um, okay, so events. Month of August. Um, Chief Collins and the Police Department will be hosting a National Night Out tomorrow 
Tuesday, August 3rd, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at 14900 Greenwood Road, which is our Medley Fitness Center. Um, it has been four years since we last hosted a national night out. This is something I feel community needs. So if you're not there, you're going to hear about it. So you guys need to show up and come and become one with um, your police officer, get to know them. And then if you got any intel, any information you want them to know, by then will be the time to tell them. Um, this will help our relationship with everybody. So it's a lot of fun activity schedule. Uh, please stop by. It can just be a pass through if you don't want to stay, but it, you're going to get a lot of great information. Uh, I am counting. I am, no, I am continuing my help for my youth, uh, for my youth initiative, because the youth always help me no matter what. They come out whenever it's needed. When I call them, they show up. I love the fact that you guys have helped me uh, with the lung care in town. You volunteer your time and services. And I want you to know that um, I will continue to help the youth uh, stay off the streets and do uh, community outreach. Um, I am hosting two events in August. First, I'm hosting a back to school car show um, slash belt giveaway. And it was supposed to be August 7th, but I'm moving that day to August 14th due to the fact uh, Park District is having theirs on August 7th. And I want to show Unity Amongst Community, so I will be in attendance to theirs. And then mine will be August 14th um, from 11 to 2. Uh, every car will have supplies in the back of their trunk of their vehicle. So when you do come out on the 14th, you can just go shopping and admire the cars at the same time. And also uh, pins on the ground belt initiative that I have is just for kids uh, with saggy pins. So I got an answer to that by giving you belts. So make sure you come out and be a part of this 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, on August 14th. Uh, I am also starting a health initiative uh, because we all need to live healthy lives. Um, I have two things planned in the month of August for healthy initiatives. First, on next Friday, Friday 13th. I know anybody that is a fan of Jason, it's always Friday 13th. Um, I am hosting a fitness workout in the parking lot of Melly Fitness at 6 p.m. And then on Tuesday, August 31st at 6 p.m., I am hosting a fun health fair uh, called Stepping with the Mayor. No, I don't know how to spell. Drew, and, look, I can't say you say Drew. Uh, Trusty Holmes tries to help me step and also Trusty Brown. So I'm working on my, my stepping skills. So come on out and um, enjoy. Um, we have more information on the website if need be. Next, um, COVID-19 is still a threat to our health. I'm asking everyone to follow the CDC in the state of Illinois guidelines and wear your mask. Uh, when required, get vaccinated and get tested if you feel sick. So if you feel sick, guys, please don't go around people or please don't get other people sick. Sometimes you don't show symptoms, but if you just feel anything, just go to the doctor. Uh, only 29% of Dalton residents are fully vaccinated compared to the 54% of Cook County. Uh, I, pro I provided a vaccination van at the fireworks show displayed on July 2nd and at the tenants meeting last Thursday. There will also be another vaccination van at National Night Out tomorrow. So if you're watching this and you want to come and be part of this movement, National Night Out, I'm talking about, but then also get vaccinated, uh, please come out and do so. Um, I know I had a lengthy report. Um, intern, one of my interns that I did have, which is free of cost, which I love, uh, is a college student. One of our interns, Miss Miss Yang, I'm on the for Santa right, Miss Yang. Uh, is leaving. Uh, she done an outstanding job. Honey, can, can you show your video? Are you there? Miss Yang Lee, are you there? I don't know if she's there or not, but I just want to say thank you again for coming to help the mayor's, the mayor um, in office uh, with any things to do for community. I appreciate that. Um, she also helped with responding to complaints and she also helped with uh, doing outreach to community. So she is a Harvard student, and um, I hope you come back next year. I appreciate everything you've done for the Village of Fulton. And if you need anything, please reach out to Mayor Henry. Um, lastly, the new Fire and Police Board of uh, Commissions is going to be uh, Robert, Robert Sherry, uh, Philip Williams, Stanley Brown, Brenda Richardson and William Fletchman will be the new 
Fire and Police Board. And that concludes my report. So again, to the community, to residents, please pay attention to your surroundings. Please look out for each other. Uh, please sign up for the Light Up the Block initiative that's going around. You can email me, email anyone in my office, and we will come and bring lights to your block. And you can put it in your um, garage light, on your porch light, or the light that's out in the front fern. Um, I'm initiating mines on Wednesday uh, for my entire block. So if anybody wants to come and see that, please stop by. Um, thank you again for everything. Next, moving on, can we start with Citizens Address? Derek. Hey, Mayor. Yes. Mayor, um, may I be addressed uh, before we start Citizens Address? Yes, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to, uh, the, at the last meeting, uh, some of the residents inquired and they asked, um, about the youth program, or well, they asked me about the youth program. So I just wanted to let the residents know um, that myself and the other trustees that's on the youth committee are currently working on a youth uh, empowerment program at the moment for Dalton. And I'm a little ill at the moment, but uh, by the next meeting, I hope to have more information and we can do some great things. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Gary, can you go ahead with the questions? All right. Uh, first question. When will the forensic audit be conducted? All right. Next question. Who is the pro champs representative? Just keep reading. Yep. Just keep reading them. It's the record. Yeah, I got to, I, you know, I got to go through them. So. Um, okay. Do you still provide removal of thick tree branches, trim the tree in the front of the sidewalk in mid-July and the branches are still there? I'm on 157th and Ingleside. Branches everywhere. When are we going back to in-person meetings and a regular citizen's address? Does the village have local, state, and federal lobbyists, someone who will advocate on behalf of the village for dollars at various levels of government? Will public works pick up large branches this month? Will the village be offering a bulk pickup day for residents? Homewood disposal does not pick up all bulk items. As a result, large pieces of unwanted junk are still on the streets. Has the issue of the repeated flooding of the residents been discussed. Our insurance company will not provide flood insurance stating Dalton is not a flood zone. Do you write tickets for village properties that are non-compliant with overgrown weeds and grass? Could you please tell me if a peddler's license is required to have a small candy stand or yard sale? There is a vehicle that has been parked on, the, on my block since October 2020 without state plates and no vehicle sticker. What department should this be reported to? Is there an in-house monthly audit on manual checks? Was there an RFP for issues Trustee Belcher is discussing?
We need light poles on 154th to 156th and Greenwood Road. When will all of the village codes and ordinances be codified and made available for the public? Are you guys aware that the residents are also going through a pandemic, just like the village has lost funds so has the residents. We are already paying outrageous property taxes. We do not have any room for more increases. Is there an open door policy for, tr for the trustees with the village legal counsel? What is the status of residential handicap signs? Residents have been waiting for months. How can a resident receive a copy of all the, of all the entire village codes? All the codes are not online. Hundred and forty fifth and university has several potholes. Who should I contact to repair the holes? Where will we be able to see the answers to these questions presented in citizens address? Who would I address an issue with a renter not having six foot fence with a pit bull? Is there a residency requirement for serving as a commissioner on the police and fire board? Where can lights be picked up? All of the statements, questions, labeled citizen dress are not being read. Every single comment has to be legally read into record, not just questions. And then there's just more comments. All right, thank you so much. Um, as usual, it will be addressed and posted via uh, website for your answers to any of the questions that anyone presented. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into this board meeting, and I look forward to seeing you throughout the community. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? A motion. And is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, call the roll. There's a motion and second. Call the roll. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Aye. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Steve. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. And Trustee Brown. Aye. 
meeting All adjourned right. at 8, 19 p.m. All right. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Have a good evening. Everyone have a good evening. You all have a good evening. Goodbye now.